a lot of thoughts on CryptoEcon. Um, one thing I wanted to quickly mention um, is that there's a great uh, book and um, uh, called Green Pilled that Kevin Iwaki and the and the folks in the Gitcoin community have been putting together that is has a very good introduction to a lot of the concepts about um, how crypto econ can create regenerative systems and build structures that are uh, positive sum in the broader world and can tackle large scale problems. So highly recommend like looking at that whole meme complex and um, exploring the world of crypto econ through the lens of regenerative crypto economics, regenerative finance, and so on. Um, and the kind of like the core message of all of that is that at the end of the day, all of the all of our macro systems and our governance systems and so on are about how to coordinate large groups of participants towards some set of shared goals. And of course, there's like tons of layers of complexity there when you think about different preferences and different goals and so on, different values. Um, but it's all kind of coordination systems at the end of the day. Uh, so if you kind of step back and look at macro systems that way, um, you can then start kind of decomposing them and figuring out what structures can yield better um, coordination principles, better co uh, coordination structures to achieve better outcomes together. And uh, the kind of like amazing promise of our uh, time today, and this is kind of why I like thinking about it in terms of solving planetary scale problems, um, is that you can use uh, these kinds of structures, these, these kind of crypto econ structures, to um, have extremely large scale impact. Um, and just to give a sense of how large scale that impact can be, just think of something like the Bitcoin network or um, the Filecoin storage providers. Uh, in a very short span of time, these networks have assembled massive scale um, computing power and massive scale um, uh, service provider. Uh, it's, it's a massive scale network with an, a, an enormous amount of uh, resource consumption and, uh, uh, and utility provided and organized by a few mechanisms. So what I wanted to kind of, um, I want to spend most of the time today talking about a, a core component um, in these, which um, we're sort of de describing as impact evaluators. Um, I'm not familiar with this, with this kind of mechanism description um, being applied before, um, so we sort of like coined it. Um, but I kind of want to di dive into, together as a group, into potential designs for impact evaluators. Uh, and then if, they're, if there's sort of like um, uh, time at the end, uh, I want to kind of then uh, talk about kind of how you can use crypto econ systems to kind of solve larger scale problems. Um, I gave a talk like this at the last crypto econ day uh, that kind of goes into Falcon Green and looks that, at that as a project and as a system that sort of tries to tackle a large scale problem, breaks it down into smaller and smaller and smaller components, um, and then tries to create incentive structures to um, solve each one of those problems uh, to then sort of vault over time into a larger, more coordinated group, um, solving each, each kind of progressively larger problem. So um, as an example, if you want to uh, decarbonize the planet, you can start by decarboni decarbonizing an industry. Um, and if you want to decarbonize an industry, you could pick something like cl uh, cloud computing. You could then um, create a subset and say, great, let's decarbonize first uh, crypto cloud computing and start with a storage network. And then from there, start with the Filecoin storage network. And you can, each time as you kind of decompose a problem, start with a smaller set that is much more achievable, figure out the system structures, create positive sum incentive structures to achieve that outcome, and then use that as an example for then the layer above, right? So if we can get to fully decarbonize um, Filecoin, then we can use that as an example to other crypto networks to decarbonize themselves. Uh, once we achieve that and create a strong incentive structure to get all of these participants doing that, we can then vault that into um, talking to other industries and saying, hey, look, the crypto industry has now fully decarbonized. Um, it is net green. Um, this is totally achievable. Hey, other industries, you go do it too. Uh, once you get many more industries doing this, then you can slowly get, you know, chip away at the problem. So um, the... 
I've come to think that, that uh, crypto econ is kind of like the highest leverage um, set of tool sets that humanity has at the moment to solve some of the largest problems we have because they, it lets us break down systems, design mechanisms, and deploy them at scale quickly. Um, and if they're working well, they can scale quickly um, into uh, some pretty enormous um, uh, scales. So the, uh, let's see. The kind of picture that I want people to kind of consider is this, for any problem that you might be running into, try and understand what the incentive landscape looks like. Try to th think about what, uh, what structures and mechanisms are causing what kind of actions by what parties. If you are trying to get to a different outcome, think of the barriers in between, like what are the hills that are preventing, um, that are locking us into a, an inadequate equilibrium here, and think of creating mechanisms and structures to warp the incentive field to get to that better equilibrium. Um, and you can do this progressively. So you can you know, start with you know, one such problem space. You can think of like using um, mechanism design as like some tool that would let you either like tunnel through a mountain in that uh, incentive landscape, or um, ideally you want to like pinch the landscape and like move it down, but that's kind of like harder visual metaphor. Uh, and then over time, if, as you kind of like solve more and more problems, you can progressively come up with um, uh, other structures and so on, and steer the planet into a much better, um, much better condition. And I think al al along the way, um, what's, what's different now about the, the world today post blockchains from the world before is that what's really going on is that software is eating mechanism design. So think of the computing platform that we've deployed as building this um, extremely programmable environment where you can deploy any kind of software and deploy it to supercomputers running everywhere, uh, including our pockets and our wrists and whatever, uh, soon to be um, all over. You ha we have trillions of devices and so on, and we have an extremely upgradable environment where individuals and small groups of people can dream up some new structure and deploy it out into the world and get a, a very um, high quality production feedback loop of whether or not that thing is good, how well it works, and so on, to the point where you can um, go from kind of dreaming up a superpower to then refining the superpower and enabling the, uh, the world to have it um, very quickly, like in a matter of like a few years. And that's unprecedented. Now, when you can use that amazing software platform with like, think of like CI, CD, and so on, and what you're deploying is not just an app on your phone, but you're deploying new coordination mechanisms for organizing groups of people at various scales, uh, you get the ability to like rewrite the planet, right? Like you, you, you can rewrite what we're all doing. And that's tremendously powerful. Like if the, the current blockchain networks are just beginning to tap into the, the potential here. So this is why it's like super exciting to be studying and working on crypto econ problems. So I wanna kind of like talk through a very um, specific component um, that I've been, um, that a number of us have been like thinking about and so on, and it, it, like, it's a very useful um, tool, and we can use it in the Falcon community to potentially um, solve a bunch of problems. So there's a class of mechanisms that we're calling impact evaluators. Um, and the way that we sort of like this, we still have to kind of better formalize these, but um, think of them as a simple mechanism that measures some impact and provides some reward. That's super general, but that's kind of the point. Um, these can have a different frequency, so these can be like a one-time process, or it could be periodic. Uh, this could have a scope that is proactive and or retroactive. So proactive might mean that it, um, assesses potential impact and looks ahead and uh, places some bets uh, and rewards it ahead of time. Uh, you can think of a grant system as an impact evaluator like this. Um, or it could be retroactive. So you can look at some outputs, measure those outputs, measure the value of those outputs, and reward proportionally. Uh, you can think of composability of these systems. You can think of whether that reward schedule is um, fixed or variable. You can think of the incentive alignment between participants. Um, 
and, and very specifically, the, the biggest um, crypto econ processes in the blockchain space are extremely simple impact evaluators uh, that are, that, that part of why they work so well is that they are very stable and whole industries can be built um, relying on their structure. So the Bitcoin block reward is the, probably the, the uh, highest, like, um, like highest impact, impact evaluator uh, in, in the deployed so far. Um, and it's, it's kind of like absurd how much happens through this. Uh, it's a very simple process. All it does, and it's kind of complicated how it's implemented. No, um, uh, unfortunately, the Bitcoin uh, community didn't kind of create a fully programmable environment and so on, so you don't have like a really nice um, description of like, here's an impact evaluator and like, here's what it's gonna do. So you have to piece it together from what the protocol is doing. But, but at the end of the day, if what's happening is that you have a process that is measuring the hash rate contributed per miner per block time. And at every block time, the IE is going to reward the miner with, with a probability proportional to the hash rate contributed. And this is achieved by like, you know, doing the whole um, hash breaking and so on. And so in expectation, miners are getting proportionally rewarded for their hash rate contributed. And this impact evaluator alone has cost one of the wildest uh, energy consuming um, processes on the planet. Um, unfortunately, most of that work is wasted. Um, we're building Filecoin, we wanna do really useful things with that kind of process. Um, but th this gives you a sense of like how IEs work. And so you can then assess kind of like what are the properties of this thing? Well, it happens, it has like a, a fixed schedule um, it happens every 10 minutes. It's running as part of the Bitcoin blockchain. Nobody can change it. Um, it's retroactive, so it's not proactive. Um, and its variability is that um, it's an exponentially decreasing emission, but it's kind of discretized. And you can calculate it ahead of time, so everybody knows what the entire reward schedule might be. Um, and everybody also has a, a view into all the hash rate contributed so far. So people can pr make pretty reliable predictions as to what the um, future um, hash rate contributions will be from other parties, and people can make pretty reliable predictions about their own contributions, and so they can um, make very reliable predictions about their own reward schedules. When you couple that with the Bitcoin price and so on, then you get out of that the entire Bitcoin mining industry. Um, this, in terms of incentive alignment, this is zero sum, so it, there's a fixed reward schedule, and it, um, it just decreases over time. Uh, you could say that it's positive sum, because there's a secondary process here where the, this IE is actually causing like the purchasing of Bitcoin. So it, by feeding a lot of that economic activity into Bitcoin, it might, it, it's kind of like kind of positive sum, um, but that's a whole other, whole other discussion. Um, you can think of the Falcon block reward as a very similar impact evaluator. Uh, what it's rewarding is QA power, um, comp contributor per block time. Here, QA power is quality adjusted power. That's where we include capacity and um, uh, Falcon Plus verified storage. Um, and it rewards uh, a set of miners with that same probability. And so over time, in expectation, the Falcon block rewards rewarding miners proportionally. Um, the incentive assign, assign, actually, there's a bug here. It's mixed because of the baseline. Um, the, you, you have, a, again, an exponentially decreasing emission. In this case, it's not discretized, so it's every block, um, or I guess it's discretized, but every block is opposed to every four years. And um, it's mixed because you have the baseline and the um, above the baseline behavior. So underneath the baseline, it's, um, uh, it's positive sum, above the baseline is zero sum. Um, and so on. So what's really going on with these things is that there's a very simple control theory loop. So if you are familiar with uh, robotics or anything like that, like you have a very straightforward um, structure for kind of, there's some system um, that you can actuate and there's a, uh, the output of the system feed, is fed into a sensor. The sensor translates that into a feedback signal that goes into a kind of controller process and that gives some input into, into the system. So think of these kind of con control theory loops as the kind of building blocks of impact evaluators where you can think of the system as like the, the network of participants, the sensor as the 
uh, measured output um, that you see directly in the, in the information on the chain or something like that. And then the controller here is the impact evaluator process that is deciding what the emission rate is or, or whatever. Um, so this kind of like very simple uh, uh, structure could be used to reward all kinds of things in the network. And this is one of these things that I think is vastly underutilized across our, our, our networks. So for example, uh, and this is where I wanna turn it into more of a discussion with everybody. Uh, I want you to think of different problems that we're dealing with in the Falcon network and think of starting to construct impact evaluators for these. Because once we have programmability, once FVM lands, we can, and even today, we can start with Ethereum. We can go and like create these in ETH um, and start rewarding uh, directly that way. Uh, think of some structure where all you wanna do is have some process that you want to reward, and you wanna create a periodic signal that you can draw out to then give a proportional reward to participants for that process. Once you can frame it that way and declare it, then you can kind of start releasing currency and at the beginning, you're not gonna get much output, but if it's reliable, over time, that'll translate into a lot of impact. So maybe like think about some area of the um, Falcon network. This could be like, we want, hey, we, maybe we want more crypto econ days. Maybe we want more crypto econ days to happen all over the world. We want people to learn about crypto econ. Maybe we want other kinds of events. Maybe we want, um, we want to think about uh, clients and client onboarding. Um, so we want to speed up the, the onboarding rate of the network, uh, maybe there could be an impact evaluator around that. There sort of is one already, but it's not as powerful as it per perhaps could be. Um, maybe we have, what's the data onboarding problem? Maybe we want to um, shuttle a bunch of drives from one place to another in like physical machines. How do we, like, could we turn that into an impact evaluator? Um, Maybe we want more on-ramp type things, certain types of like material to show up in the network. Could we create impact evaluators around that? And so to maybe like take some examples, I wanna kind of like work with this group to take an example and break it down into something that we can create an impact evaluator over because if we get good at this, then we can steer the whole um, uh, community towards like larger scale problems. So, uh, who has like a candidate problem that you wanna solve in the network? Raise your hand if you have a candidate problem you wanna solve. Even if you don't know how to solve it. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of one that you mentioned, but onboarding and just to kind of put a, a finer point on it. So we've been, me and, and Steph Magdalinski at the Falkcoin Foundation have been, have been trying to work out some ways of understanding this um, and creating metrics for it, essentially for usability, right? So one of the things that's hard right now, because it's not, we're not really incentivized directly to tackle it um, as an ecosystem as a whole, is simply you know downloading, installing Lotus, setting it up, and joining the network. Right? It's 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 hard, and it's 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 not it's no one's fault that it's hard. Right? It's just that like there is no thing in the system that that's, that that specifically rewards that. Um, one of the things that we can do, and we do do, and in some ways it's bad, <laughs> is we have multiple funnels to get to that point, right? If you search for how to install Lotus or how to get Filecoin running, you'll, sit, you'll hit five or six different ways of doing it. Um, so one thing that we can do is pull out, like we have a measure, we can measure between those, right? So we could pick out something in those systems that says, like one of them is like, okay, now going to this Falcon faucet and pick up these things. And we're like, oh, okay, we can now detect that someone is going through this funnel and we can also see whether it trails off. So anyway, that's, that's 3% yep. of the way through the kind of thinking that, that, yep. that we would need to do that. Um, let's, let's maybe, um because that problem is very broad, let's try and like distill it down. How about like onboarding um, large clients? So there's some, some set of clients out there. Right now we don't know, we don't have like a, a measure in the chain of who are the potential clients. We could get that. So we could get some information to feed that into the chain. Um, and we don't know what their user experience is. 
right? We don't have the way to rate the UX of onboarding the data into the network the way that you get to rate a, uh, a Lyft car or an Airbnb um, stay or something like that. So you could get some data, some qu like qualitative data, some quantitative and qualitative data from clients and then integrate that into some feedback signal and feed it into some periodic reward schedule. Um, so what, how would we, like, let's, any ideas on how we would do that? How we, like, what do we need to add to the system to create a structure like this? So we need some treasury with like some incentive to go towards some set of participants that are gonna demonstrate that they've helped onboard clients. We have, we need to get some data from clients somehow and feed it into the chain as well, some qualitative feedback output. So who can think through how to piece these things together? We need some verifier to say for the people who report that they onboarded the client that they're telling the truth. Uh, yeah, so you, you do need to be able to verify that the clients are telling, are who they say they are and are telling the truth. You can verification and resolution. Yes, Later. yep, so you, you, need, you need like, the feedback signal that you're getting needs to be verifiable, so that's certainly true. Uh, but even like, um, even before we get there, how, do, how can we compose these signals to produce an impact evaluator? We can measure the savings that these clients have by switching the point. You can measure the savings. Yeah, um, uh, true. So that that would be like a a competitive um, analysis type of uh, thing that one client that, that you could advertise to the whole world. Once you're doing it well, you can advertise that to the whole world and draw more clients. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking even more basic than this. Like you, if I were to today like start programming a thing, what do I do? What do I write? Like let's break it down into the component system so that I want to like get us all thinking in like algorithmic terms so that then you can start deploying these things. I'm really curious to know how many new clients onboarded today. Great. So we need a set of how many clients are there out there, potential clients or actual clients, and what their rate of change is. Right. So we need to know how much who the clients are, we need to track them in the chain. Right now we don't know. Um, they're not on there, right? Like we know sort of, but we know through mechanisms outside. We don't know directly in the chain. So we need a set of clients, and we need um, to know how much storage they have an interest in putting in, or how much storage they have already put in. What else? Kind of know, right? We know like the, um, let's say we treat the data cap allocation that went out as like potential interest on the line. Yep. And then you treat, you, so you have a throughput of how much Jellica is being issued from a like, chain's perspective. Yep. And then you also know how much Jellica is being consumed. On a, so you have two flows. The one is uh, inflow of data cap, it's outflow of your consuming the data cap. Yep. So, um, so it's how you expect that to be a funnel. So then we can establish, so let's say, um, so we have this like inflow of data cap of like potential clients' interest on the line, right? Like you went through this process, it get being captured on the chain. Yeah, maybe you're gonna onboard 10 petabyte. Um, but at the same time, you also know how fast this data cap is being consumed, right? Like so, and you say, oh, how many deals landed on the chain and what is the percentage of that? But, but right now, um, the data cap deployed to clients only sometimes is going to the actual clients. Sometimes it's going to the SPs who are doing the work for the clients, right? So right now, a lot of SPs are approaching clients and they're doing work with those clients um, and they're running the whole process for them, like the, all the Filecoin components. So um, we, we have to like get the actual intent from the client um, and how much storage they might want to bring in. And it, um, then if that's the case, if, I mean, I feel like we're moving off the protocol, then there are just a thousand, um, there's many, many ways to do that, right? Just like. No, I'm saying like, let's, let's try and compose it into a protocol improvement. Like we could write a FIP someday and say, let's add these set of components to improve the storage onboarding experience. Um, oh, sorry, I have a hypothetical, um, it could be wrong, like could be off, but like maybe people can just like indicate their interest, right? Stake some Filecoin and say, hey, I want to bring this much of, uh, much of data onto the Filecoin yep. network. That could now you have some indicator on the on chain. Then you want yep. to say something? So you have some indicator of interest and then you need to measure, what do we, like, we need to measure the output, like it happening, and some signal, some qualitative or quantitative signal out 
and feed it. How do we do that? What, are, what might be a good way of like getting the feedback from the clients on how well that went? I have a different answer to a different question, which this reminds me of the Amazon, the Amazon affiliate program, right? Sure. Like you need some metadata there somewhere. Yep. This is sort of trying to cure that the last thing, which was yep. like, where does the data cap live? So right now we don't have anything on chain that says it came through this route, right? Yep. Like, so maybe a, t a tag that you would associate with data cap yes. that was like, I, it came through this funnel, right? Yeah, so you it, have a destination. For yeah, it. one of the larger meta points in a lot of what you're saying is that the client onboarding funnel is poorly instrumented in general. Right. And we need way better instrumentation of how um, that data is coming in to then, over time, measure what things are providing what outputs um, and what quality, what quality, um, what kind of, ex where are people getting stuck and why and so on. So yeah, that's the point, like, maybe we should start by instrumenting the client funnel, figuring out all the different kinds of clients, all the different groups, and getting reliable and robust information about their experience and how well they're progressing. And once we have that, then we can maybe piece it into some impact evaluator. We maybe started with one that was like really hard. <laughs> Important to us, but really hard. Uh, yeah. I have a question on that. I mean, uh, so the ex in this case, the extra um, value that is created can actually be monetized in a sense, right? And it actually can be distributed um, across you know all the people who contributed this is a easy monetization problem um, one of the I, I'm interested in uh, like uh, how would you do something like that if it's not as easily monetized so um, yeah so um, that's a whole head in a totally different direction so I'm gonna bring it back to impact evaluators what, what I want us to be what I wanted this conversation to kind of get to is making things of this type because these things are super easy to deploy, and once they're deployed, and they're stable, and people can rely on them, and they have data about their performance, then people can start making predictions about the future, and can start building entire businesses and industries over them. So, like, you wanna get to something like as simple and straightforward as this, deploy it, um, and, uh, and enable a large community of participants to bet on that not changing. So, so like, we gotta get to, like, Simple things like this. Maybe we can go from data onboarding to a different different problem. Or uh, is, what about the idea of um, like an auto renewal? Like yeah. if, if somebody's having a good experience, they just oh my twelve month contract is over. I'm just going to auto renew the exact same thing. Like that would be kind of a vote. It seems like a verifiable mechanical thing that's happening that shows a vote of confidence or a thumbs up sort yep. of thing. Yeah. So um, right now we don't have a good way of like getting. Uh, after the fact feedback from individual participants and their experiences. And that's kind of like uncommon in blockchains, but very common in our day-to-day -day activity on tons of applications, right? Like car services, hotels, all of these things, um, browsers, like everything asks you for your feedback and like they start rating your output. And based on that, they use that signal to optimize their system somewhere. So maybe we should just that would be, might be like a very trivial ad. Like find a good way to c contribute, um, to be able to pull participants for feedback. We have to make it verifiable in some way to the point before. Like we have to make sure that that data is of high quality, but that might give us a lot of signal. So how, how about, let's, let's think about events. Suppose that we want to have, we're like planning next year's events and we wanna have tons of community organized events around the world. How might we design an impact evaluator to cause that? I guess you have to work out what you want from the events. Mm -hmm. And often it's about trying to bring people into the community, mm -hmm. uh, hire people. So if, that's, if you measure how many people you're actually hiring based on the attendance of the event, you can start to yeah, measure the impact. Yeah, so, so um, that's like a, like a specific um, thing around, you, you have a certain set of qualities that you want to gauge about the event. Uh, you're, you have one you, you describe like one measurable output from events, like people hired. Um, you can also measure attendance. You can also measure, measure like locations. You can also measure like. Um, 
Yeah. Do you, do you want to tell us a lot? Uh, uh, your 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 more. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so tenants, um, other other. Uh, you could talk about media mentions. Yep. Um, you could talk about recognizability of yep. Filecoin or whatever the, the thing is that the event is. So we have a bunch of signals that a lot of different groups care about of what is a good event. And we need to be able to get some reli reliable enough measurement. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be reliable enough to then feed back into a signal. So suppose that we can do that. Suppose that we have these like set of measures and we can, after an event happens, go back and score them. For each one of these, I'm convinced that all of us can come together and come up with pretty good ways of getting that data out of the internet and come up with a score. Suppose that we now have a set of events that are happening with like some set of you know, properties and their scores. How, we, how do we go from that into an impact evaluator? We look at the frequency that we're going to measure it by. Yeah, exactly. So what frequency? Let's propose some. Probably directly before the event, directly after the event, and you know, like a month after. Yeah, so we, so we, could, we could design an impact evaluator that, as every event happens, measures that event. So you could have like a proactive grant-making thing that gives some capital for people to try making, putting on an event. You can measure the outputs and then reward it retroactively. How about we do something like what, the, what these block rewards do, which is kind of like, um, what's extremely powerful about these is that they're auctions. So the way that they work is that they basically walk, the, the impact evaluator walks up to an open network and says, um, there's this amount of reward, I will deploy this amount of reward in this unit time to um, proportionally to the overall total quality that I get out. And that, that is able to like ena enable all participants to put in whatever they think um, they want to add for whatever the reward is worth. Um, I'm not saying that this well, but like auctions tend to be like a really good way to kind of let um, participants in a network find like the, the best price. Yep. What comes to mind is like a lottery or something. So it's like you want to maybe incentivize people that add all this feedback and enjoy this event. I didn't like this session, I didn't like that session. And the more feedback you give, the more like lottery tickets you get for some sort of reward at the end. So like might incentivize people to show up in the first place, might incentivize people to get feedback along the way. Yep. And it everyone has it sort of reminds me of the Bitcoin block reward. It's sort of like a someone gets all the value, but everyone's motivated to yep. take so, these actions. So that feedback um, would be all probably feed into one of the qualities that we're measuring about an event, right? So let's, let's write that. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, so I think we're talking about this in terms of like a very like automated system. Um, and so like there's, you know, there's a, I'm curious on your thoughts of weighing the value of like a rapid prototype um, doing something very like manually because you don't know what inputs you're actually going to care about and you want to just quickly go through a bunch of them. I I'm thinking more about data onboarding right now. Um, versus having something that is more uh, programmed and automated um, that makes sure that you are not um, like, like when humans are doing it, just like thinking about things, there's always the temptation to not be very stringent about what things you're evaluating. Um, where if you're doing it more programmatically, it's like more well-defined. What are your thoughts on that one? Um, so I think that what's extremely useful about programmatic structures that are regular and dependable uh, in the long term is that you decrease the transaction cost of entering into those conversations. However, they're much less friendly and forgiving, right? Um, for example, a, in a grant program, there's all kinds of back and forth that, that are instrumental in refining grants into a good structure that is likely to produce really good value. So um, it's not clear yet that you can have a good 
automated grant making thing that isn't like totally like immediately produces like bad output and is like incentive misaligned and so on. So, so I think that there are a lot of things that, that do require um, a lot of individual um, involvement in, in kind of like human oriented programs. Um, uh, but the transaction cost is very high. For each one of those things, you're gonna have a very high transaction cost of being able to interact, being able to um, describe the, the potential value and align together onto a good outcome. And what's extremely powerful about these like IEs in the cloud, so to speak, is that once you put them out there, participants can transact directly with the IE and you drop, you drop the transaction cost between all participants and so you create a much more open environment. And so um, they don't work well for things that are very fuzzy and hard to quantify. Um, so things that are really qualitative or where you are trying to align on like potential predictive value that they don't tend to work really well. But for very concrete things that you can turn into measurable, this like concrete quantified um, impact over time, they, they can work really well for that. So, and, and I do think that we can, even with something like events that are ex so, so extremely qualitative, um, you can get some measurable outputs out of that and turn that into enough of a signal to, to know what events in a, in a region of, in a period of time were kind of like regarded by the community as like the most valuable, so to speak. Um, and then out of that, you can like then create kind of an impact evaluator type, type thing. But relatedly, what are your yeah. thoughts? It's not just the take the server, but uh, what are your thoughts on like overfitting then to data that is already measurable rather than creating new mechanisms of measuring? Because you're sort of like always tempted then to just like use the... 100% of these overfit. So these, yeah. these, you, you get exactly what you reward. So like totally, you, like a, you know, um, so the Bitcoin community did not want to maximize the amount of hash rate on the world, right? Like, um, can't really speak for Satoshi here, but I really don't think Satoshi and the Bitcoin community were, sat around thinking, you know, how can we turn the entire planet into hash rate um, and like put every single computer into an ASIC? Um, and so 100% of these overfit, and that's a misapplication of an IE, right? Like, releasing this thing into the world <laughs> uh, created like this massive consumption of energy in like this to like wasteful process, and now it's like, we have to fix that. <laughs> and we have like this run runaway process that we have to like go and fix. So we've learned since then, like we we're making better things that are like now more attached to value. Um, so for example, the the, Falcon Plus useful storage thing is like a huge upgrade on, on just like say just capacity, or even that is a capacity um, is a huge upgrade on like wasted hash rate. So can we kind of like go to some things that like th th there are sort of some domains where this kind of thing can be very helpful. Um, there are many cases where they won't be, and like you, you don't want to kind of incentivize something to overfit too much. Um, but there are many problems. With at enough scale that you can turn it into like pretty good quant quantifiable output that you can um, then reward this way. That's kind of like what I think. It's like for some problems you can use these, for some pro for a lot of problems you can't. Yep. Uh, can we quickly just go back to Danny's question? And I'd yep. love to hear your thoughts. Uh, can this impact you know onboarding clients? Right? Can we use like unique data set? Maybe we use some algorithm that matches and say. If it's 80% different, it's a unique data set, and then the variability will be like increasing uh, instead of decreasing, because as you onboard more and more, then it's harder to find unique data set. Would that be something that solves partially? Yeah, yeah so, so um, yeah, it's possible. I mean, I think like you, you could say, hey, there's a class of data that we want to onboard. Suppose that we say for the Atlas project that you'll hear about, um, you want, um, you want to get like geospatial data onto Filecoin. And like right now you want to run an IE to get like pictures of the planet like added at different resolutions. Um, so what you can do is like you can set up an impact evaluator to reward participants that contribute <laughs> and that put into the network like pictures of the world taken between you know, one time and another time. You end up in a hard problem where like you have to verify those things, like you have to verify that, that was cor done correctly. But you can, at that point, reward all participants for bringing that specific type of data into the network. And it will cause a lot of it to appear. But you better be good about like, your verifiability because you're gonna get the wrong output. Like you'll overfit, like the network will overfit to what your reward says, not to the intent of your reward, right? Like this is where like the letter of the law really matters. If you get that wrong, like you'll, you'll get the wrong output. 
Thank you. Yeah, no, no, we're good. No, no, uh, I'm happy to like pause. I wanted to get people thinking about impact evaluators. I think like um, they're, they're non they're uh, non trivial systems. What I kind of want to leave you with is like um, you can generally take these larger scale problems, break them down into smaller ones, and then if you can come up with a concrete way to measure the output and feed it into a periodic re reward schedule, um, then you can like then you can move mountains, but um, you better, <laughs> to the point, you better like know what you're measuring. Uh, all right, thanks.